Hi everyone, Patrick here. Today's video will be my April wrap up and I'm just going to say this immediately that April just might be my best reading month of the year so far. It's truly amazing. I love almost all the books that I read in April. I think only one, yeah, I think only one that didn't really meet my expectations, but majority of the books that I read in April was just amazing. And the first book that I finished in the month of April was The Black Tongue Thief by Christopher Buellman. I've been reviewing books for almost five years now, and this is the first, yes, this is the first physical adventuring copy that I got from Golings. And it's so beautiful, look at this. I really love this cover art, look at it. And I'm truly grateful that Golang sent this physical copy to me because I love this book. It was incredibly fun and I've mentioned this several times that this book, The Black Tongue Thief, is one of the most hyped fantasy books of the year. A lot of well-known authors in fantasy have praised this book with very very high praises and bloggers has also called this one of the best debut of the year. One of the best fantasy debut to be more precise because the author has written several horror books before this one. As for the book itself, now that I've read this book, I think it really quite lived up to the expectations. It is a very fun book. I think in the first quarter of the book, I laughed so much. Somehow the joke just clicked with me, and almost the entire book is filled with plenty of jokes. But this doesn't mean that this fantasy book uh, entirely belongs in the comedy genre because there is a lot of tension in this book as well. Christopher Buellman has a really great prose that really made the main character's voices shine. Kinshna Shanak is one of the most fun main characters that I've come across in fantasy. If there is minor criticism that I have for this book is that I wish the side characters are more engaging because this book relies entirely on the main character in my opinion. Definitely give this a try because this book comes out in less than 3 weeks from now. Yeah, there is a lot of great release coming out this May and this is just one of them. By the way, if you don't know, The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn is out now and you should check that out as well. Then the next book that I want to talk about is The Hand of the Sun King by J.T. Greathouse. This is the first book in the Pack and Pattern trilogy and this is a debut. And in my opinion, I have a very strong feeling that this will be the best fantasy debut of 2021. For a fantasy debut being published this year, I really don't think I will find a better one than this one. I have done a full spoiler-free review for this book on this channel. I will leave the link to my review down below in the description. But for now, let me just say that if you haven't heard of this book, put it on your radar now. And I know that this is still three months away from being published, but please, please put this on your radar and read this as soon as you can. It is amazing. A coming of age fantasy done right. Terrific prose. The prose just blew me away. I loved it so much. Just from the first chapter, I was already hooked. It is probably the first high fantasy books I know that actually prioritize calligraphies, writing, and the advantage of being ambidextrous in the narrative. And it all works so well. There's magic school, a believable relationship, beautiful and destructive display of magic. It's honestly incredible. I picked this up on a wimp and wow, it blew me away. <laughs> But will The Hand of the Sun King be the best book of the month? Now that's a difficult question because I have another big contender, and that is The Empire's Ruin by Brian Staffoli. This is the first book in Ashes of the Unhewn Throne trilogy, and this is a continuation to the Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy. If you haven't read Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy, I highly suggest that you read that one first before reading this one. I have done a full spoiler-free review on this book on this channel and on my Goodreads, and I explain in detail why it is very mandatory to do that. And to sum up my thoughts briefly on The Empire's Ruin, this is definitely Staffily's best work so far. Here's the thing, I like Chronicle of the Unhewn Throne trilogy, but I wasn't completely amazed by that trilogy. I did have some issues with the pacing and the miscommunication trope, especially in the third book of that trilogy. But Skullsworn, the standalone prequel to the Chronicle of the Unhum Throne trilogy, completely won my heart because I absolutely love that book. It is the second best standalone novel that I've ever read. The first one is, of course, The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. But back to the point, I think The Empire's Ruin is even better than Skullsworn. There is a lot of legendary scenes within this book. Not one, not two, but three that, in my opinion, rival scenes from The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. That is not a praise that I gave lightly. And the Stormlight Archive is one of my top favorite fantasy series of all time. If you want to know more about my thoughts on this book, 
uh, do check out my review. I will link the link to my review in the description as well. Then the fourth book that I finished in the month of April is the Master of Sorrows by Justin Cole. This is again another coming of age fantasy with magic school trope in it, but somehow this book got better in the second half for me. And for this particular novel, the more the story moved away from the magic school setting, the more it became amazing. <laughs> I don't know why that happened, but it just did. And Justin Cole has big ambitions for this series. For those of you who have watched my May TBR video, I'm going to repeat this once more. Justin Cole is planning the Silent Gods to be the first quartet out of three quartets. So in total, if everything goes well with the sales and reception of the series, uh, in total there will be 12 books in the entire series. But the author has said that the four books in the Silent Gods will conclude one arc of the story, so there will be no cliffhanger. Uh, but as I said, I had a bit of an issue in the first half of the novel, but nothing too major. And by the time I'm done with this one, I'm definitely hooked to continue. In fact, I will be reading the sequel by the time I'm posting this video. Definitely check this one out if you love coming of age fantasy with the magic school troupe. And the fifth book that I finished is The Crown Tower by Michael J. Sullivan. This is the first book in the Ryria Chronicles series. Although Ryria Chronicles is written after the Ryria Revelations, but the story, this is a prequel to the Ryria Revelations. So The Crown Tower is indeed the first chapter in Royce and Hadrian's story, and it is about how they met, and it is about how they became a duo. And my god, this one exceeded my expectations. It's been four years. It's been four years since I've read Ryria Revelations, and being back with Royce and Hadrian once again was so much better than I ever expected. I have missed my time with Royce and Hadrian a lot. I have missed them a lot, and that's why I finally picked up this book. And I did expect that I will enjoy this one, because my mood for it feels right. But I totally didn't expect how good it would be. And I think if you haven't read Ryria Revelations, I don't usually recommend this because I usually recommend reading in publication order, but it might actually be a better idea to start your journey from reading the Ryria Chronicles instead from the Ryria Revelations. The Ryria Revelation is one of my favorite completed series, but it didn't start off as smoothly as I hoped. However, Sullivan's prose in the Ryria Chronicles exceeded what he has done in the Ryria Revelations. I'm speaking based on technicality here. It just felt more immersive and I really get inside the character's head much more faster and easier than my experience with the Ryria Revelations at first. It is worth remembering that because this is a prequel series to the Ryria Revelations, uh, this means that Royce and Hadrian obviously will survive the Ryria Chronicles. With that knowledge in mind, the fact that I still feel scared and terrified for their fate goes to show just how immersed I was in their story. Seriously, this is so good, one of my favorite books by Michael J. Sullivan, and I think this just certified him as one of my favorite authors. <laughs> Then the sixth book that I finished in the month of April is my monthly read. It is the fifth book in The Last Kingdom. It is called The Burning Land, and this is another great installment in the series for sure. It wasn't as good as Sword Song in my opinion, but this is Bernard Conwell. I don't think he can write a bad book. I cannot say too much on this book because this is the fifth book already, but there is really one interesting culminating in The Burning Land. It is that, in my opinion, I think, I think Utrecht deserves some praises for his patience. A lot of people think of Utrecht as being hot-headed, and yes, he indeed show a lot of difficulty in holding back his anger, but come on, Alfred's treatment towards Utrecht was just awful. He's awful. Without Utrecht, he's nothing. He has saved him a lot of times, and yet he still got treated horribly. I'm not gonna lie, I actually wanted Utrecht to end his reign immediately. <laughs> But you know what, I think that's just a sign of great characterizations that I'm deeply engrossed by their story. And the last book that I finished in the month of April is The Last Watch by J.S. Dewes. This one is unfortunately a bit disappointing to me. I mean, The Last Watch has been garnering a lot of positive receptions. The premise of The Last Watch can be described as the night watch from A Song of Ice and Fire in space. Yeah, I think that's really a great description for the premise of this book. But unfortunately for me, uh, the characterizations were really lacking. Almost the entire second half was compelling, but I personally felt that The Last Watch would have worked so much better as a sci-fi movie than a sci-fi novel. It really felt like a sci-fi action blockbuster movie. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe one day this will get adapted as a movie and I'm sure it will be a great one. Hopefully. That's all the books that I finished in the month of April. As you can probably tell, I had 
a blast reading in April. It is quite surprising because April was a very busy and hectic month for me and I was still able to finish 7 books and I'm very proud of it. 6 of them were pretty good too. So what's my book of the month? Honestly, I still cannot choose between The Hand of the Sun King and The Empire's Ruin. So just consider that these two are my books of the month. These are hard picks because I also want to include Crown Tower as my book of the month. As I said in the beginning of this video, I highly recommend every book I finish in April. So that's it for me today, that's all the books that I finished in April. Do you spot anything interesting? And let me know how many books you finished in April and what's your favorite book of the month. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye bye!